All right, we'll take you live now to the Ontario Legislature, where question period is now underway. Let's listen in live. This is information from the public. To apply for the government, the Minister of Transportation. Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Leader of the Opposition for her question. Mr. Speaker, Ontario's roads are among the safest anywhere in North America, and mandatory reporting for physicians and optometrists has been in place in this province since 1968. The Ministry of Transportation oversees a rigorous process that adheres to national medical standards, and Ontario's program is closely aligned with that of other provinces. Mr. Speaker, multiple statements were provided to the reporter, including an in-depth briefing with subject matter experts from the Ministry of Transportation on the driver medical reporting program. Now, Mr. Speaker, the goal of the program is to protect public's, the public from individuals who have a medical condition that makes it unsafe for them to drive. We are continuing to review all programs within the Ministry Spons. of Transportation to make sure that our roads remain the safest in North America. A supplementary question. Again, Speaker, 35 questions, not one answer. Yeah. And every indication that this government muzzled civil servants. Speaker, this is not the first time this government has interfered in the work of the independent public service. In fact, just last month, the Premier and this same minister were caught withholding important information about public transportation projects from the public. Yeah. Speaker, I agree with Democracy Watch. This is the kind of dangerous, undemocratic secrecy that covers up wrongdoing and abuse and prevents problems from being solved. So again, Speaker, back to the Premier. What exactly was his office trying to hide? Minister of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm happy to repeat the response that I gave previously. Mr. Speaker, Order. multiple statements were given to the reporter in question, including an in-depth briefing by Ministry of Transportation officials on the, on the program itself to answer their questions directly. Mr. Speaker, with respect to the building of the largest public transit infrastructure program anywhere in North America. Metrolinx has been working closely with community groups and with affected stakeholders. Over a hundred meetings were held with City of Toronto officials since the beginning of the program, since City, of Coun since City Council itself voted in favour of our subway program. Over 30 me 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 meetings Response. were held with a specific member of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, to discuss her, their concerns about issues that are affecting their community members. Mr. Speaker, we're going to continue to work closely with the city and with members. Thank you. The final supplementary. Nothing to see here, eh? Nothing to see. Speaker, more than 280,000 Ontarians had their licenses revoked for apparently medical reasons over 10 years. Ontarians deserve a government that they can trust. They deserve a government that's straight up with them. But instead, they're getting this pattern of secretive behaviour. Questionable deals with insider developers on the Greenbelt, secret mandate letters, mysterious contingency funds, sneaky minister's zoning orders, and now they're squashing information and the facts about this licensing program. Order. Speaker, if the Premier has nothing to hide, why won't he be transparent with the people of this province? Yeah. Minister of Transportation. Mr. Speaker, I hate to disappoint the Leader of the Opposition, who clearly wants to construct a narrative that has nothing to do with the facts themselves, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in 2020, our government published a study in conjunction with the University of South Wales and Sunnybrook Health Centre. That study looked at the medical reporting program in Ontario over a 10-year period and found that our program was effective and it saved lives across the province, Mr. Speaker. That is the purpose of the program. As I have said, we have met, we have provided multiple uh, statements to the reporter in question, including an in-depth briefing that that reporter participated in to pose his questions directly to, to subject matter experts. Mr. Speaker, Response. we're going to continue to evaluate the program to make sure that it meets the needs of Ontarians and keeps our roads as safe as they've been among the safest anywhere in North America. Order. Also to order. The next question, the Leader of the Opposition. No answers from this government. No transparency. Thank goodness
least we have some accountability because this morning, the patient ombudsman released their annual report. They received more than 3,000 complaints last year with one common theme a lack of staffing and a lack of access to care. Hospitals are struggling under this government's staffing crisis, and worse, the Ombudsman is warning that this government's expensive, ideological push toward two-tier health care is only going to prolong this issue. So my question is to the Premier, will you stop taking nurses to court, get the lights back on in public operating rooms, and get Ontarians the health care they need? Remind the members to make their comments through the chair, the Deputy Premier and Minister of Health to reply. Mr. Speaker, and first of all, I'd like to thank the patient ombudsman. You know, since the uh, office of the patient ombudsman has been in existence, they've been a valuable tool to assess where we need to make improvements. There is no doubt that the investments that we've made in terms of learn and stay program, colleges and universities, to allow nurses, uh, lab technicians, and, and paramedics in Northern Ontario to be able to have their tuition and books covered is making a difference in terms of our uh, ensuring that we have sufficient health human resources. You know, I, I have to point out a very successful uh, partnership that we have with the College of Nurses Order. of Ontario, where in the summer we directed them to ensure that individuals who are internationally educated Response. had their applications assessed and ultimately approved and licensed in the province of Ontario. Historic. 7,000 new nurses in the province of Ontario are practicing today that wouldn't have been there without that work. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. But more are leaving every day, yeah. right? More are leaving every day, so you can't keep up. Anybody who's had any experiences in the health care system over the last few years Order. knows this. Order. Speaker, it gets worse. Yesterday, Order. we heard from experts in the Ministry of Health and the Ontario and Ontario Health at Public Accounts Committee. They acknowledged that the lights are off in pu public hospital operating rooms while this government hands million-dollar contracts to for-profit clinics. And as our health critic asked multiple times yesterday, I want to also ask the Premier, why are you denying public hospitals the opportunity you're giving to for-profit companies for additional surgeries and diagnostic yeah. imaging? Order. And the Premier to reply. Mr. Speaker, I will give the facts, sheer facts. Since 2018, Order. Mr. Speaker, over 60,000 60, nurses, 8,000 new doctors registered here in Ontario, more than ever in the history of our province. And the fact is, and I want to thank the, the colleges of, of nurses for bringing on 12,000 new nurses last year. As they said, not us, that was a record. But even better, Mr. Speaker, we have 30,000 nurses in our colleges and universities being trained to get into the field. That's what we're doing. And the final supplementary. Again, it feels like the twilight zone in here. I just, I don't know where this premier and who he's talking to, Order. but he isn't Order. talking to Ontarians. Order. He's not talking to Ontarians. This is not the reality of what's happening out there. The thing is, Speaker, this government's plan, this two-tier plan, is unnecessary, it's time-consuming, and it's totally wasteful. We already have the infrastructure we need to shorten the wait times. But because of this government's staffing crisis, one-third of Ontario's operating rooms aren't running at full capacity. Speaker, to the Premier again, will this government fund public hospitals to properly use existing OR space instead of giving those funds to for-profit clinics? Minister of Health. Speaker, with the greatest of respect, we have and we are. Since the pandemic, $8 million been available to hospitals across Ontario to ensure that they can ramp up ORs when they have capacity. Eight million dollars. In last year alone, we spent three, we offered hospitals the opportunity to expand their OR by over three, 300 million dollars. We've made those expansions and our hospital partners have truly stepped up, but we are not stopping there because this is not an either or, this is an and. We can also expand our community surgical and We've done that in Windsor, in Kitchener-Waterloo, and in Ottawa through the expansion of existing infrastructure in community uh, care that, that is now allowing Spons. more people 
accessing cataract surgery. We're getting the work done. Yeah. Yeah. The next question, the member for Ottawa West, McKeon. Thank you, Speaker. While our kids are struggling without adequate supports, teachers and education workers are Okay, we've been listening in to the Ontario Legislature where question period is taking place. A leader of the opposition, Marit Stiles, accusing, accusing the Ford government of its lack of transparency and also criticizing its move to moving surgeries to private clinics and citing the patient ombudsman's report that there were over 3,000 complaints uh, highlighting the strain on the health care system.